Christmas stories. Um, whole idea here is that uh, all of humankind, it seems, uh, searches for the stuff that we talk about at Christmas, love and joy and peace and hope. <laughs> Um, it, you don't have to be a Christian to look for those things. Just look at our society. It, it just kind of bubbles up. It oozes up. Uh, I, I, know, I know January comes and everybody's each other's throat again. Um, but but, but it, seems like, it seems like people want to get into this season earlier and earlier. At least that's how I look at it when they put the, the orange lights up for Halloween. I don't think they're celebrating. I think they're looking towards Christmas. That's just my deal. All right. I, I, think, I just think people can't, can't wait to get into this time because, because deep down all of us know Every single human being knows that this is what life is supposed to be about, love and joy and peace and hope. And we're supposed to live in that reality. We, we all collectively have this great ought, right? Things are not how they, are ought, to, how they ought to be. Uh, and everyone knows this. Uh, and, and so we, 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 this bubbles up during this time and crazy things happen, like, like people give all kinds of money to charity. What's going on there? They, they can't get it the rest of the year. Well, these, these, these feelings, these ideas, they, 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 they bubble up, see? And, and it's what we all look for. Um, and so our focus is, is that in, in God gives these things in reality. Um, it, it's not uh, uh, um, something that's bubbling up and then we hope for it for a little while and then, and then those hopes are dashed till t- 10 months from now when we start again or whatever. No, it's something that God gives us in Jesus, uh, the one who came at Christmas. That, that's our focus. Last week we looked at Christmas hope, the certainty that we have in God and in his promises and his actions for us, the absolute certainty. And today uh, we look uh, at, at Christi- Christmas uh, love. Um, and, and we're going to show a short film to get into that, uh, and then we'll talk. So. me of, uh, of some of those commercials when the astronauts are in outer space and they see the, the house that's lit up by, fire, by, by lights, right? <laughs> uh, you, you know, these, this little film seems nonsensical, but it's not. I think we all know that, that somehow life is supposed to be about love, right? It's, it's, why, um, <laughs> it's why we search after so much in our lives. It's, it's why we watch Hallmark movies, right? <laughs> uh, th- th- this time of year, every, e- even though we know these are stories that, that, are, that are make-believe, right? Uh, and, and the idea of, of love shining brightly, uh, changing our lives, changing the lives of others, that's really our focus today, and that's what Christmas love uh, is all about. Uh, we have a hard time with love, though, trying to define it, trying to, to pen it in, figure out what it is. I mean, we, we say stuff like, um, I love my dog, and I love a good steak, and I love my wife. You know, and, and that's all supposed to make sense somehow, right? Uh, you know, it, it really doesn't, does it? And so we're going we're gonna to start, and we're going to let God today describe for us what Christmas love is all about, okay? And we're going to do that looking at this story, uh, this account when the angel Gabriel came to Mary. Go ahead. It starts like this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. You see all those things I have underlined there? Uh, you, you might want to do this as you read through uh, the Bible sometimes. Uh, start underlining stuff that, that indicates that this is real. Notice this didn't start, once upon a time there was an angel. It, it doesn't start that way. Or once upon a time there was this really nice girl, her name was Mary. And so we're, we're telling this make-believe story. No, no. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth, I love this one. Uh, you know, I've, obviously I've never been pregnant, right? But my wife's been pregnant, and, and uh, I remember at six months, we were, she was saying, Whew, one trimester left. I, 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 I turned the corner. I, I mean, when you're talking, hey, when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, Ma- Mary was close to El- Elizabeth, right? I mean, she would say, oh, and, and, and it was, so, so right away, it's kind of putting it in your face that this was a point in time. This is real. This is not once upon a time. This was, hey, when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, that's when this angel, not just an angel, he's named Gabriel, 
right? Gabriel came to Nazareth. I've, I've been to Nazareth. Have any of you been to Nazareth? I'm just curious. It's, it's still there. It's changed a lot, right? <laughs> but, 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 but it's still there. Came to this real town in Nazareth in Galilee. Galilee's still there, right? Um, to a virgin pleasure married to a man named Joseph, right? And, and he was a real man, and this was a real young lady, Mary, huh? y- young woman, Mary. The first thing about Christmas love is that it's real. It's not make-believe. It's not once upon a time. It's real. I think that's huge. Because I think, I think we all know that we're, oftentimes we run after stuff that's not real. Isn't that right? Christmas love is real. And it takes place in flesh and blood reality. I mean, the angel... He didn't have like a megaphone yelling from out here, right? Hey, down there! No, he steps into their lives. By the way, that's what Jesus did too, right? He took on flesh and blood. He, he stepped into our lives. So Christmas love is, is, is lived out. The, the, it's, it's, it's in the flesh and blood reality, the stuff of life. There we go. The, the stuff of life, huh? I think that's kind of important too because sometimes... We, we, we make love like in this stratosphere thing that's really not real and really not a part of our lives. And then this goes on. Uh, the, the angel uh, said, went to her and said, greetings you who are highly favored, highly favored. If I'm going to ask you to do a big favor for me, did I earn that? No, I'm asking you something I don't deserve, Right? If I say do a big favor for me, you know you're being asked to do this. Like if I ask you, hey, I'm moving out of my house, and I really want you to come move furniture. Would you, come, would you join me? Yeah, right. You wouldn't join me. Yeah, I, I had enough of that when I was young too. But the, the point is, that's a favor, right? And if you asked me to do a big favor for you, you wouldn't have earned it either. This same word in the Greek uh, throughout the New Testament and is, is translated Grace. Uh, hail to you, Mary, who are highly graced. Who are, and grace means undeserved love. So Mary, this wonderful gift God is giving you, his love that you have not earned, is being showered upon you in huge measure. That's what Christmas love is about. It's that kind of love. Not something that's earned, not something where you jump over a hoop for, it, it, through a hoop for, not something you climb over a bar for. It's a gift. And then he says, the Lord is with you. The gift, the foundation of the gift and knowing the gift is in this certainty of God. What we talked about last week, hope. Hope in, in the New Testament is, is certainty, absoluteness. It's not like, I hope, uh, that, 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 uh, I, hope I win a million dollars tomorrow. No, that's, that's not what it's about. It's, it, it's the, the certainty. Uh, I hope the sun rises tomorrow. You know, I'm pretty sure it's going to rise, huh? Yeah, so, so, so that's what everything is, is based on, the certainty of God's promises kept in Jesus. And, 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 there, and, and it was, he was given to us simply by grace, this wonderful love that, 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 that's a gift to us in our flesh and blood reality. And it's not a fairy tale, it's real. And as this account goes on, God doubles down on some of these things. Go ahead, Lisa. The angel says to her, do not be afraid. So, so Mary right away is afraid. Would you be afraid? I'm just curious. If, if this big, big old honking angel stands, I mean, Gabriel's like an archangel, right? Would you be a little frightened? Boom. Hey, Mary, right? <laughs> yeah, of course you'd be frightened. So he says, hey, hey, uh, Mary, calm down. Don't, don't be afraid. And then he repeats this. You have found, read that word with me, favor with God. Must be pretty important if he repeats it, huh? Mary, the relationship that God has with you is based on this. Undeserved love. You don't have to jump the hoop. You don't have to climb a mountain. You don't have to be perfect. It's based on my love that's poured out on you unconditionally, unearned, from God himself. And then he kind of lays it out for her that she's going to have a baby and and this baby's going to be the savior of the world and so forth. And, and she's saying, man, how can this be? I mean, I, I don't know what's going through Mary's head. Um, 
Uh, but if it was me, I'm thinking, well, my whole world's being turned upside down. And besides that, wait a minute here, I, I, what, what are you talking about? Man, I don't, I don't deserve this kind of thing. I'm going to go through a lot of stuff here, huh? And so what the angel does is he doubles down on this certainty of God, for no word from God will ever fail. The foundation is always in the certain promises of God for us in Jesus. You can trust him. This all flows into Christmas. We see, go ahead, we see the angels over Bethlehem, and what do they say? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his, read the word, favor rests. What's that word mean? It means grace, on whom his undeserved love rests. We have peace with God and through him with one another because of this grace that's, that's poured out on us. I, I think... I think this is so very important. You see, God had to come to us in our flesh and blood reality, in, in, in really and truly, in our flesh and blood reality, in space and time, with this wonderful, undeserved love to connect us to God again, because that's what life was meant to be about. It's what we lost and what we're all looking for, to live in this unconditional love of our God and to reflect this unconditional love in the relationships around us. And when this happens, it's like, it's like that little film, like, like that, that bright light shining. You know, it says of Jesus in the first gospel of John, the light shines in the darkness and the, go- and the light cannot, and the darkness cannot overcome it. This is, this is Christmas, uh, a love shining brightly. Right? When, you know, when I talk this way, and when I talk about this bright, shining love of Jesus in, that, w- that the Spirit of God would bring to your hearts, that's what he's doing right now, every single time. These are not just merely words I'm talking about. These words from, from the Bible, they're, they're called the, the, the very Spirit comes to us through these. And for me, and for you, and for each of us, the Spirit of God is whispering to your heart that this is true for you. That this grace, this undeserved love is for you. It's that, that, that thing that you might have that you think that somehow God, God's holding back his love from you because of that stuff that you did or that stuff that you thought or that thing that you couldn't overcome over here, that's nonsense. You see, because no darkness can overcome his love for you. He took all of that to the cross and he won once and for all on Easter morning. This is the certainty of Christmas love. This is meant to brighten our lives, that God's forgiveness and love is poured out on us so that we can be connected in this relationship with God the way we were created to. That's what life is supposed to be. And through him, to shine this Christmas love into the hearts and lives of others in in, in flesh and blood reality. This thing called grace that we live in with each other uh, and, and with the world around us. You know, it, it always costs something. I, I, I need to say that. Grace, uh, sometimes uh, people have said it's, it's God's riches at Christ's expense. I'm not saying that grace doesn't cost something. But the whole idea here is God's grace to you and me. The cost was paid for by Jesus on the cross. See? And he offers it to us free. So that we can offer this grace to another. It, it might be... Um, person who is close to you, could you be your husband or wife? You know that moment when they need to be offered grace, something that they haven't deserved. In fact, maybe they fouled up. <laughs> and, and to connect again, you need to say, I forgive you and, and love you, and, and the slate is clean, and, and bring in a little grace into their lives. And they need to do that with you once in a while, and, and with your children, and um, with your parents, and with that old guy across the street, maybe, you know? There's so many ways that we can shine this bright love of God's Christmas uh, uh, grace into the hearts and lives of others. Yeah, I was thinking about this and the idea of stories. Uh, One of the stories I couldn't get out of my head, and you may think it's kind of funky, but 
I, I, you know, we did, uh, we were in a church in Denver uh, for a number of years before we came here. Denver snows, there's snow there, there's this, and, and it, it, it gets icy and sometimes, yeah. Well, I never got, got used to that, and, and we did, on Christmas Eve, we do three services, one in the afternoon, about 4.30, one at 7, one late at night, 11, it was a candlelight, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, and so this one um, Christmas Eve, I, I got there early. Sometimes I go home, but this time I didn't. Uh, I, I got there early, and I had Sarah with me, so she stayed the whole night with me. And we did, and, and the, the ice had gotten kind of slicked up at 4 o'clock, so you, you drive in, and you, right? And, and so then at, at uh, 1.30 maybe, because 11, 12, about, about 1, I'm, I'm walking out to my car, and Sarah's really tired. She's been a trooper. You know, so I'm, I'm walking out to my car, and it, now it's completely iced over. It's about 20 below. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and I'm walking out to my car, and there's ice in the parking lot now, and, my, and I'm frozen in place, and I got a big old flat tire on my truck. Yeah. And I remember looking at that thing and saying, God, you know, because at that time, I, you know, like I kind of rebelled, like I wouldn't wear gloves sometimes, so I had no gloves. And, and, and uh, I, I didn't have anything to get down on it, so I just had a pair of, you know, like, like this, you know, what am I going to do? And, and I'm thinking, how am I going to do this? And, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep the Christian spirit, but I'm pretty freaked out, you know. And, and, um, and, and I look up. And here's this guy, he's named Jack Patrick. I just talked to he and his wife uh, may, maybe 40 minutes before as they, they were leaving. And they were so excited because for the first time in a number of years, all of their kids were coming over to their house and they were going to have this great Christmas celebration that night, right? As soon as they got home from church, they, it was like 1230 at night, but that's when they could all come. And they were so excited about it. And so I look up. And here's Jack. I mean, it, because the ice on the roads and he had a front-wheel drive truck, he looked like Santa Claus with his sleigh, kind of a drunk Santa Claus, you know. And up the hill he comes, and he brings a, he brought a Jack with him, and he, and he dressed it so he could work. He had seen my flat tire. And, and, and he was there. He gave up that time with his family. Wow. That's Christmas love. I, I, I think, see, it cost him something. And, and I'll never, see, the light it put into my light, uh, life, 30 years later, I'm talking about it. Isn't that crazy? That's what Christmas love can do. Uh, I didn't earn it, <laughs> right? Didn't even expect it, he just gave it to me. I, I, I see it all around us. I, I have a couple... That's the second year in a row they called me, and, and they say, you know, we have everything we need. Um, we, we don't give ourselves Christmas gifts. We, we want to set aside, uh, I think it's 500 bucks, and if you find a needy family, we want to give it to them. We don't want to know who we are. We just want to give it to them. That's Christmas love, huh? I get a, a card from dear friends of mine every year, and... Uh, uh, they, they talk, uh, and in the card, in my name, they, they've given a Christmas gift to a family in Africa so they can survive another year. I don't know, four or five hundred bucks. That's Christmas love. Isn't it? What we're doing with Spark, the, uh, throwing open our building and partnering and, and, and stepping up and and trying to help folks, uh, fire victims. That's Christmas love. It's not that these folks can earn anything, uh, can earn that love, right? It's just that we can give it. You, you see it in, in so many ways, in so many opportunities. A few weeks ago, we gave um, Operation Christmas Child, you remember that, the boxes? We do this and then we forget it. We, we mailed out 200 of those boxes to kids all over the world who have nothing. And you guys stuffed all those things into those boxes and you, and you gave us the 10 bucks a piece to mail it to, to kids that can't give you anything. But because of you now, we'll have the joy of these gifts and they will be told of the greatest gift, Jesus Christ, and the grace, the gift that he gives them himself and life with him. That's Christmas love. I, I uh, talked with a, a friend of mine, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and, uh, and I know that they're, that they're struggling. They are um, uh, struggling with job. Uh, he didn't, uh, he's between jobs and, and, and struggling with, with, uh, high, with kids just entering college, and they're really struggling, struggling with a, 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 a baby in their home, struggling in, in all kinds of ways. And yet what, what she was telling me about is that they have kind of taken under their wing this young couple and this young couple is really falling on hard times. Their business is kind of disintegrating, and, and they, 
they, they were just in a hard place and they ran into them and they had them come over for dinner and, and, they, and they took them separately and they talked them through how much God loved them. He was, he was out, uh, he, the, the, uh, the uh, husband took the young guy out to the garage and she talked to the gal and, and, and they fed him, they had a great time and then they gave them a gift certificate so they could eat the next week. They didn't earn any of this stuff, guys. They didn't jump through a hoop for this stuff. It was just given to them. It's grace. And how can people do that? Because they know the reality of grace in Jesus. He gives us everything. We don't deserve anything. And he gives us his presence, God with us always, and his his love like an ocean, and his forgiveness, and provides everything for us. See, um, the place to begin to live with this sign of Christmas love that, that changes the world with its brightness is to receive it first. A- a- and then to take steps to give it away. It, I have to tell you, it always costs something. Um, it costs Jesus everything, but look what he got. He got, he, 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 he earned the right that the whole world might be saved through faith in him, right? Wow. He earned the right that you might have life in him. He thought you were worth it. Isn't that amazing? It empowers us by his spirit then to live in the same way, like, like the sun and the moon, we can reflect this love into our lives. You know, every time we bring an offering, it, it's, it's about this grace stuff. It's so that somebody else can hear about Jesus. Not that they deserve it, but that we can gift them with that through our offerings. Um, there are so many ways, um, and, and, and God brings Sometimes it, these folks right in front of us. And sometimes he brings it right in front of us as his people. When we can reflect this kind of love into our world, it's like a light knocking people over with its brightness. And that's what Jesus meant to do at Christmas. In the Old Testament, Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so Christmas is real. (laughs) Christmas love is real. That's huge. Christmas love is lived out in flesh and blood reality. Christmas love is all about grace, undeserved, costs somebody something, but not the one it's given to. And the foundation of Christmas love is Jesus Christ, the the, the absolute sureness of who we are in him. Okay, put the next one up. In the Old Testament, it says, say to those with fearful hearts, and and this is talking about God speaking to the coming Savior, uh, God the Father. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come, he will come to save you. You see, that's why we need grace. God needed to come to us. And, And he did. At Bethlehem. Emmanuel, God with us. And this goes on. It says, then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer and the mule tongue sing for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness. When John the Baptist sent two of his followers to Jesus, he was in prison and looked like he was going to be killed. And he said, are you the one for sure? This is what Jesus quoted. He says, look what I'm doing. I'm doing just what the prophet said I was going to do. You see, God's grace steps into our flesh and blood reality. He opened the eyes of the blind, the ears of the deaf. He he healed the lame. He loosed the tongues, not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually as well. He opened the eyes of the heart and the ears of the heart. Those who were so broken that they couldn't even begin to live in Christmas love He healed them so that they could spring out like a deer and love people in that way. This is what Jesus does for us. Isaiah 61, it says this, the Lord has anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for prisoners. Where is this you? Where are you the brokenhearted? uh, Many folks have written that Christmas is such a hard time for people. I think it's because we, we, we don't look at Jesus, we look at something else to, to, to think about this is what Christmas is, huh? 
And, and so we're the, we're the brokenhearted. I don't know what you bring today in your hearts that you're broken over or, or what holds you captive. But Christ Jesus has come for you at Bethlehem to free you and to, to heal your heart. To proclaim the year of the Lord's, read the last word, grace. That's what Christmas love is. It's showered upon us like an ocean and his spirit powers us to give it away in our lives. So this week, where do you need a little Christmas grace in your life? <laughs> where are you the fearful one, the blind, deaf, and lame one? Where are you the one in the desert gasping for water? Receive brand new by faith the grace of Christmas in Jesus, for he came for you to bring you grace. And where and how can you share this grace in the life of another? Where can you bring a cup of cold water to someone who is in the desert? Where can you be the one who is there for the blind, deaf, or lame, whether this be physically, emotionally, or spiritually? Oh, it will cost you something, time, money, emotions, but the grace of Christmas is that in Jesus you already have everything. Merry Christmas. Amen.